A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the, that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. Verbum Domini I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces might not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. I will bless the Lord at all times. Fear the Lord, you holy ones, for naught is lacking to those who fear him. The great grow poor and hungry, but those who seek the Lord want for no good thing. Dominus Fabiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother, Lazarus, who had died. 
When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. Verbum Domini. Today, as we observe the memorial of St. Martha, simply make three points about this holy woman. First of all, some say that she is blaming Jesus, and others say that she's not blaming Jesus. When she says, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother never would have died. And I like to follow those fathers who say that she's not necessarily blaming the Lord. Rather, she's really blaming herself. A woman like Martha, who is busy about the concerns of the home, would do something like this. If I would have just contacted you earlier, if I'd have sent word to you earlier, Lord, you would have come, and if you'd have been here, my brother, would not have died. And so we see in that the humility of someone like Martha. And this can be what many of us do in our own lives, that in our busyness, we can tend to be self-sufficient. And we can often look at our spiritual life and say, it's very important for me to sit with the Lord, and I, I intend to do that when I get this done, this done, this done, this done, and then I'll do it later. And we all know what life is like. There always keeps, the more things keep getting added to the list, and the Lord keeps moving down on the list. And so St. Martha is one who reminds us, no, put the Lord first on the list. The other option for the gospel reading that we could have used today was that famous account of Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha saying, well, tell my sister to help me. Um, She's uh, beaten down or exhausted by uh, her busyness and caring for the home. But remember, Jesus does not look at St. Martha and condemn her for waiting on him. He does not call her a wretched woman for, how dare you waste all that time preparing a meal for me, Martha? He still uh, has tremendous uh, affection for her in who she is as one who waits on the Lord. And yet he elevates what is to be primary in the life of every one of us is that union with him, to sit and to listen to the Lord and to be close to him, that part that Mary had chosen. So in our own lives, to remind ourselves, let me go to the Lord first. Let me listen to him while I yet have the opportunity. And many elderly people will share this with us, to say, they'll often tell us, pray while you have the opportunity. Take the time while you still have the chance to do that. The older you get, the less time you realize you have. Don't wait until you're a senior citizen to begin to pray, because then you have different sufferings in your life, the aches and pains that prevent you from being that attentive to the Lord. 
or that tendency that we have the older we get when we sit down and we say, okay, now I'm going to sit and listen to the Lord and 30 seconds in, we're deeply listening to the Lord, fast asleep. And so, again, in our own lives, this is what we can learn at every stage of our life to make the Lord first. I would throw in here too, uh, for those who are dealing with a sick uh, family member or loved one, many times people don't call the priest until it's that final hour, you know, and there's all this haste and worry and you gotta get Father in here, they're about to go in 30 seconds. But the person's been ill for months the person has been in the hospital for days or weeks. Be quick to call your pastor. Be quick to put word in at your parish to ask, Father, can you come? You know, so we can learn from St. Martha today, if I would just put the word out earlier, the Lord will come, and the Lord comes in the person of the priest and in that grace of the sacrament of anointing or when he comes to pray with that person. And yes, the person may pass, but the, the one who is sick or suffering encounters this power of Jesus who is the resurrection and the life. The second point that I would make is that Jesus is interacting with her, saying, you know, your brother will rise from the dead. And Martha's response is, I know he'll rise from the dead on the last day. She believes in the reality of the final resurrection, but she does not yet recognize the person of the resurrection. And so Jesus is inviting from her, and what Martha gives in the gospel text that we heard is a profession of faith in the divinity of Christ. She acknowledges ultimately by the invitation of Christ that he is the source of all life, natural life and eternal life. This is what Jesus is saying. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe that, Martha? And this is what makes her a saint, that she's this woman of faith who is able to profess that faith and say, yes, I do believe that. I recognize you. I do believe you are the one coming into the world. The difficulty that Martha has is like any other person at that time. They're recognizing, they're seeing Jesus really as this prophet. They're recognizing his holiness. They're interacting with him in his humanity. But until his resurrection, they don't fully understand or grasp, or it's difficult to take hold of the reality of his divinity. So Martha is interacting uh, with the God-man, but not fully, just like the apostles, comprehending who this person truly is. Um, I'd simply say it's, it's not a matter of Martha being too busy. I know we, we joke about that a lot. I do myself. I know when I was a young priest, I said, today is the feast of St. Martha. Hello, my name is Father Anthony, and I am a Martha. And everybody was supposed to say, hello, Father Anthony, just like a 12-step a program. <laughs> um, but we sometimes get this picture of St. Martha and Mary Magdalene. You know, Mary Magdalene is this, the holy, holy, holy one who sits at the feet of Jesus. And you know, that's what we pondered last week when we observed her feast day. But when we think of St. Martha, many people uh, depict her as, you know, her hair disheveled. She's sweating all over and she's just running, running, running. And this chaotic woman, that's not St. Martha. She's a woman who is very busy. But when we depict her that way, what we in essence say is, well, Mary was holy and she had faith and she knew Jesus. But Martha was so busy she didn't have faith, she didn't know Jesus, and she was a pagan. Now, to bring that into our own understanding, that would be like saying a monk knows Jesus, but a diocesan priest doesn't have a clue who he is. And we all know that that would be completely 
complete ignorance. You know, the, the distinction that the church uses in Mary and Martha is often making a comparison between the active life and the contemplative life. And yes, we do give great honor and respect and recognize the dignity of the contemplative life, but not at the expense of or at the purpose of undermining the act of life in the church. Again, it's not only the contemplative nun that has union with Christ, but the active sister is a pagan, or the sister who's a nurse or a teacher doesn't know the Lord. You know, the challenge is there for the sister who has an active side in her apostolate, just like every one of us in our lives, we have to have a contemplative dimension in our life. And yet there are those who are called to serve the Lord the way Martha did. Look at someone like Mother Teresa. Look at the Dominican sisters that you see on EWTN who are teachers. Um, the great primacy in the church is for those of us who are religious, who have contem a contemplative act of life. St. Thomas Aquinas said, we're the best. You know, so Franciscans, Dominicans, we blend Martha and Mary so perfectly. Now, how silly does that sound? You know, this, to Jesus, we'd say, well, Mary is so much better than Martha is. Not in the eyes of God. Not in the heart of Christ. He has an affection for every person that he has called into existence and that he's invited to follow him in the way and the mission that he has given to them. And so St. Martha is this holy woman in her busyness, in her service of Jesus and her care for Jesus. And yet in that activity of her life, she is the one who comes out to meet the Lord first. The commentators on the scripture uh, reference again to the fathers that they say Martha was the one who cared for the, the, the household. And so when she heard word that the Lord was coming, she went immediately to greet him and to welcome him. You know, uh, such a sign of welcome and hospitality. Or some even say that the Lord, she recognized she could hear that the Lord was almost upon them. And she went out immediately. Just the way, the response that every one of us is to have to the Lord. That we know the Lord is near. And to show him that sense of welcome. To open our hearts, to open our homes to him. To say, come. Come. And that any, any one of us who lives in that home, like Mary, could then be close to Jesus. The third thing that I would uh, point out is the familiarity and the comfort uh, that we see in someone like Martha speaking to Jesus. She holds nothing back. And interacting, I know who you are. Uh, I know I believe in the resurrection. You know, um, she honors him, treats him with due dignity and respect. She sees and recognizes that this is this prophet this holy man, she comes to recognize him as the Messiah, but to admire this faith that she has in the trusting friendship uh, that exists between, um, in that home of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, the relationship that they had with Jesus. Um, one of our, our cook, uh, Paul, joked with us one time that he wanted to take a religious name. And I think it was like Brother Lazarus, Martha Mary, or something like that, that he combined all three of these names. I uh, still joke with him sometimes. Brother Lazarus, Mary, or Brother, I can't remember, the brothers would know. But we were calling him this religious name for a time. And he recognized, you know, this... A sense of hospitality that is provided 
by these three individuals, this brother and his two sisters. And I'd simply conclude with a quotation from St. Jose Maria Escriva, who invites us to admire the faith of Martha and to imitate her trusting friendship with Jesus. He wrote, have you seen the affection and confidence with which Christ's friends treat him? And they interact with him in a completely natural way. And he invites us then, St. Jose Maria wrote, speak to him, to Jesus, with calm confidence and say to him, teach us to treat you with the loving friendliness of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus.